Welcome back to The Bible Says What? Today I will summarize Matthew chapter 12, where Jesus answered questions about the Sabbath and exorcisms, and where Jesus talked about what is in a person's heart. Jesus and his disciples were walking through a grain field on the Sabbath, and they picked some wheat and started to eat it. As usual, the Pharisees were watching Jesus. They said, you and your disciples are breaking the rules of the Sabbath. Jesus answered them and said, your understanding of the Sabbath is incorrect. Don't you remember in scripture that David and his companions ate the holy bread when they were hungry, but that was not allowed? Don't you remember in scripture the law says all priests break the Sabbath by working in the temple, but they should be considered innocent? Something greater than the temple is here. I am Lord of the Sabbath. If you understood the scriptures, you would understand when I say, I desire compassion and not a sacrifice. But instead you condemn the innocent. Jesus walked into a synagogue. He saw a man who had a withered hand. The Pharisees followed Jesus and then asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Jesus said, yes, I deem it lawful to do all kinds of good things on the Sabbath. Then Jesus healed the man's hand. Jesus said, if one of you has a lamb and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, would you just look at it suffer instead of helping it? No, you would not. In my eyes, a man is much more valuable than a sheep. The Pharisees were shocked at Jesus' authority and gathered together. They talked about how they could try to trap him and destroy him. A little while later, a demon-possessed man was brought to Jesus. The demon was preventing the man from seeing and speaking. When Jesus cast out the demon, the man began speaking and could see. But the Pharisees were not pleased about this either. They started yelling at the crowd, saying things like, This man casts out demons because Satan is living inside of him. Jesus answered them and said, Wrong. If Satan is casting out demons, his kingdom is divided, and it cannot stand. I cast out demons by the Spirit of God. Jesus continued, Whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. But you can still be forgiven if you blaspheme and sin against me. I will forgive you if you turn from your sin and turn to me. But I give you all a warning. Whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit and speaks blasphemy against him will not be forgiven in this life or in the life to come. Do not do this. Every single person who lives or has ever lived will be accountable for every single careless word they have ever spoken. The mouth speaks out of what fills the heart. If a person's heart and soul is evil, they will speak evil words. If a person's heart and soul is good, they will speak good words. By your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Some Pharisees heard Jesus speak and they finally had enough. They said, Jesus, you claim to be the Lord of the Sabbath. You claim to cast out demons by the Holy Spirit. You heal people on the Sabbath and you say it is lawful, breaking our traditions. You speak about how you will forgive people of sin in the next life. You speak about condemning people after seeing what is in their heart. We want you to give us a sign, a really big sign from heaven. We want you to prove you are who you say you are. These miracles of healing and raising people from the dead are not enough for us. We want a really big sign from heaven that you are the Messiah that has come into the world. Jesus spoke up and said, you are a wicked and adulterous generation. You crave a sign after seeing so many miracles. I will give you one sign, a really big sign. 
I will give you the sign of Jonah. Just like Jonah was in the belly of the sea monster for three days and three nights, I will be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. The most important verses in this chapter are Matthew 12 verses 36 through 40 which state, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we want to see a sign from thee. But he answered them and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the fish's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The thing I think the Lord wants us to understand after reading this chapter is that despite seeing Jesus do many miracles, from healing the blind to raising the dead, the Pharisees wanted Jesus to perform a large miracle to prove that he was the long-awaited Jewish Messiah. Jesus offered them one. In a roundabout way, Jesus said he was going to be killed, buried, and then raised from the dead. That would be their sign. And this is one of our signs today. God wants us to see that Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath and has the authority to deem something legal or not. And God wants us to see that there is a sin that will not be forgiven ever. That sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, whatever that looks like. Do you keep asking for proof that Jesus Christ is God? Jesus is offering you proof of his resurrection as a sign. Why don't you look at all the evidence and then surrender your soul to God today? Since there is nothing more important in life than this, and since no one is guaranteed their next breath, why don't you put a priority on figuring this out? Why don't you repent for your sin and turn to the Lord for salvation? Jesus humbled himself and died on a cross as my substitute and your substitute, and the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus conquered hell and death. God said that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that the Father raised Jesus from the dead, you would be saved. Why don't you do that right now? Thanks for watching the Matthew chapter 12 episode. If you enjoyed it, please share it with someone. If you want to join me on this long video journey, feel free to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.